So Rebecca, um, you've been very open about being a sex worker and a mother. Um, as a mother myself and a daughter who was raised by um, a woman who's considered one of like the pioneers for women in the adult industry and someone very influential. Um, this is a topic that I really like love to explore. I think it's really important. And so my question to you is, how has fulfilling both those roles been for you? And what have been some of the challenges that you've come across? So, um, I, they were pretty young when I started and when your kids are young and you are trying to keep a roof over the head, pay bills, etc., you don't really think about the future. I was a young, young mum. I was 16, 17 when I had my eldest and who's a boy and, uh, about 24 when I had my daughter who I'm really close to. Um, so the, I think the truth is it's a little bit difficult having a, a, a teenage boy. From my experience, it wasn't easy um, for obvious reasons. Um, if you're an active, it's great now that they're older, etc. But when you are in a career that is not only, um, you know, keeping your direct family supporting direct family family there's other members of the family that you start looking after whether that's your grandparents etc you've also got um your your putting your kids through private school and things like that it's really hard to compromise your security um for the sake of the internet now what happened was i feel it's probably even going to be even harder because today youngsters young teenage boys and girls but i i feel i didn't have such a bad experience with my daughter because she wasn't looking for porn or anything like that um but i do feel that i because i never told my kids i never we just wait like i i never went to their school i never did nothing but someone found someone recognized me and i I, there's a possibility i didn't get on with my son's dad there's a possibility that he may have said something or something like that but that's something I have to live with. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's not ideal for your son. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But from my experience, I feel that, you know, it just wasn't ideal for my my son. I mean, he's, you know, in his 20s now. But, um, you know, it was a lot easier having a daughter who I'm, you know, I'm, so close to her but it was just it was difficult anyway with my my son I, you know his dad was a, a bit of a dickhead and there wasn't that support there so I feel that that's possibly how that went but there are ways it's not that was my experience you do have to protect them because like when they're young they you, I, I didn't want my kids to know that one like that's something that you have to keep from them you have to protect them you know the adult world is the adult world and you save that for the adult world, you know, like kids don't need to know that they don't need to experience that at school. So I had a cover story. I went to, you know, I was, I was going to, I was studying law. So that was great at that time. And so I had to juggle these lies. I never went to school. I never went to school to go and pick them up and stuff. I'd always pay someone to um, be at home. So there was a lot of I always had to have two places to keep all my work stuff and things like that. So raising kids as a single parent, as a sex worker, is not easy. It wasn't easy in my experience, but I almost had to fight harder and make more money because of that. Like in order to have this other place where I can go and do my work and stuff, because you have to keep them separate. So, you know, and, and to be honest, you become, you get a thick skin to people, the outside world judging you. You're like, do you know what? I've got enough going on here. I don't actually give a fuck what you think. I'm going to handle this myself. I want to protect my kids more than anyone, you know? And so you just, you just, you, you just, you know, I, I, I have great, I had a great support network, like, um, and money helped that, you know, my kids went to private school and, you know, they had, um, they had great, um, people with it who would look after them in the week and then at the weekend um I would I, I was kind of like I'd say like an absent father do you know what I mean that would go away for work and then spend time with them at the weekend so that's kind of what it was like 
I've got really close to my daughter in the pandemic. Like, you know, we always had the good times and stuff like that, but we've really bonded in the pandemic and um, she's just amazing. You know, she's just, I really am close to her, but unfortunately I'm not very close to my son and shit happens. Like that's life. And, you know, nothing's perfect. I'm never going to sell someone a perfect story. And, you know, that is life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, do you think that perhaps it was harder for your son? Uh, you said, because he's a boy, like, did he, did he find like your videos and then, or you think someone just told him? I think someone told him, I think he was teased at school. Um, yeah, that's, I, that's the hard part. But as he got older, I remember him going, he loved meeting all my friends. Like when he was like 17, 18, he was like, yeah. I love this side of this world. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but there was, but I think there was resentment from him in the sense that, you know, and you know what, like when this video gets posted, there will be lots of hate. There'll be lots of, you know, if I, when I talk about the sun, and you know what, I know, I know, I, I know the, the comments that people get and how, oh, you're a terrible mom. Like I've heard it a thousand times and people that's, that is life. You know, I'm, I just don't lie about these things. It wasn't, it wasn't an easy road and that is it. Shit happens, you know, and you just have to get through life and that's it. But you said you're you're close with your daughter. So is she come to accept what you do for a living? Do you guys talk about it ever? Um, so um, my daughter, we don't really talk about it because she, when she was younger, we we talk about actually yes we do we talk about um, like she said you know mums used to always ask her what I did for a living and I was just like because um, she'd be like oh they keep. They would never ask me. They'd always ask her. And I'd say, um, mummy's a model. And I was just like, that's very simple. It's not too much lying. Because I don't want to lie all the time. And um, she, sa mm -hmm. she said that it was always, she just didn't really know. Because I never told her I wanted to. But it is hard. Because you, what do you tell your young kids? Like, for me, it's not something yeah. that you tell. Like, you don't. Like, it's, it's an adult industry and when they're like so young you're not going to have that conversation but until she was older and um we you know she it was uh, when the whole cock destroyer movement happened it made it almost even though I was like this word is so outrageous isn't it like I'm a cock destroyer yet people are going oh my god you're a cock destroyer like it's like oh you're you're Rebecca Moore you know it's almost like my new name but it was like it was like this thumbs up to oh we're accepting you now and it was because mm -hmm. of all of that and I mm -hmm. thank everyone for that because it turned it almost was a change in how people viewed me and how they viewed the whole what I did and what I stood for it was like there was this change from that video and my daughter I think <laughs> because I all of a sudden had the community um being wonderful and me doing all these other things my my work was I could kind of like I was still doing porn films and still doing escort reading but I was doing these club appearances I was doing pride appearances and things like that so it's kind of like it all almost sort of gelled into one a little bit and then we kind of start we've had conversations and things like that I do not talk about escorting with I sometimes talk about it with my mum because it's something I'm really proud of but you know, I'm very aware of people's boundaries and it might not, I I don't know, you know, it's like that isn't a boundary that, you know, if they're, if they want to talk about it, I'm happy to be open and talk about that, but I'll wait until that moment happens. So I'm very, I'm very socially aware and like about people's boundaries and stuff. So yeah. That, that makes sense. Um, yeah, you know, I, I've, I've spoken to a lot of other mothers and, and, you know, sex workers as well. And it's always like that question of when do you tell them? How do you tell them at what? Cause you're right. You know, when they're very young, it's obviously not an appropriate thing to say. Um, so like at what age do you tell them? And the problem is, is that these days with the internet, you know, kids are looking at porn way before they should be. So then you're almost forced to broach the subject before maybe you should, because 
you know, they're not really of age yet, yet they're getting access to all of this stuff. So it's like this really tricky thing that, you know, I never had to experience because I didn't grow up with the internet. You know, when I was young, um, what my parents said to me was, you know, mommy and daddy make films and pictures for grownups. And that was kind of like the extent of it. And I was like, okay, it's for grownups. I'm not a grownup. So, you know, this is not something that I'm allowed to look at. And I didn't really, Mm -mm. you know, I guess explore it kind of more. And then, you know, I kind of figured it out and I used to like steal their magazines and stuff, but it was just (laughs) magazines. You know what I mean? It was like different. And also too, my mom was, um, you know, she'd done some modeling, but she was ultimately a director and really just a photographer. So Mm. it wasn't really of her so much. Um, but, but yeah, like I, I just, you know, when I think about, you know, my daughter and how I'm going to deal with that when she's older, because yeah, I mean, the internet is just like something it's kind of forces the conversation perhaps before, anybody's ready to have that discussion. So it's just, it's such a hard topic. And I'm just always, you know, curious about how, you know, different mothers deal with it. But I will say that I find that most of the time, you know, almost every mother is like, I'm doing the best I can, but it's still a struggle. And I don't have like the perfect solution to that question. So. I also think that if you've got an excellent relationship with your child, which I feel that that I possibly didn't have with my son because of, you know, issues with his dad. I've always had a strong bond with my daughter. So if you have a strong bond with your daughter, your son, you know, as they grow up, it gets easier and you'll know the right time. That's what I feel in my heart is that like you are, I'm so, it, it's not about planning a conversation or anything like that. It's, it's, it just happens organically when there's love, like anything, anything's possible. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.